acquired and gradually assimilated over the course of very many of their centuries, as always thanks to the abnormal conditions of existence established by the beings of earlier generations, and that this being me, owing to external circumstances not depending upon them, had finally become inherent in the contemporary free brain beings, and it was therefore inevitable for them to occupy themselves with this. And indeed, my boy, at the start of these processes, they usually refrain instinctively from such unnatural behavior but later, when each of them finds himself in the midst of the process, and willy-nilly sees and becomes convinced that the destruction of the existence of beings like himself is accomplished so simply and that the number of those destroyed always grows and grows, then in spite of himself he begins instinctively to feel, and automatically to value, his own existence and seeing with his own eyes that at that very moment the possibility of losing his existence depends solely on the number of enemy beings not yet destroyed, and in consequence of the strength and functioning in his imagination of the impulse called cowardice, then because of the impossibility in such conditions of deliberating sanely. With his already weakened being mentation, and from a natural desire for self-preservation, he begins to strive with all his being to destroy the existence of as many beings as possible on the enemy side, so as to have a greater chance of saving his own and as this feeling of self-preservation gradually becomes more intense, they all reach the state, as they themselves call it, of bestiality. But as regards that new means of destroying each other's existence which I then saw, it was impossible to apply this logical confrontation of mine for the simple reason that the opposing sides were stationed fairly far apart, and that in these semi-favorable conditions they quietly and cold-bloodedly, out of boredom as it were, did something or other, with a certain something, and thereby destroyed the existence of other beings like themselves. And so this new means of theirs for the destruction of each other's existence strengthened in my essence the need to clarify and to understand beyond doubt all the genuine causes of this phenomenally strange psyche, which had become proper solely to the presence of those peculiar free brain beings. I had nothing particular to do at this time on the planet Mars, I decided to wind up my current affairs without delay and descend in person to your planet, and there, on the spot, to elucidate at any cost this question that had always troubled me, in order that once having solved it I would no longer have to think about these phenomena of our great universe. Several Martian days later I flew there, as always, on the ship occasion. This time we decided to descend on the continent of Asia near the country named Afghanistan, since before our flight we had clearly seen through our test one of that the latest process of reciprocal destruction was just then going on in that country. Having descended onto a region near Afghanistan, we decided to send our ship occasion for mooring to some isolated place far from those regions recently populated by your favorites. I must tell you that in recent times it has become anything but easy to find a suitable mooring place for our ship on the surface of your planet. Since your favorites have built themselves many kinds of contrivances for marine locomotion, which they also call ships, and these ships of theirs are constantly flitting about in all directions, mostly around the continents. We had, of course, the possibility of making our ship occasion invisible to their organs of sight, but we could not annihilate its presence 
and therefore it could not remain stationary on the water without the constant danger of their ships bumping into it. Well, my boys, for this reason we decided this time to send our ship for mooring to what is called the North Pole, where their ships had as yet no possibility of going. While we were descending to the surface of this planet of yours, the process of reciprocal destruction in Afghanistan came to an end, but all the same, I remain near this country, as of that period these processes of theirs took place most frequently on just that part of the continent of Asia. Since, on this last personal flight of mine to the surface of your planet, I intended to attain without fail a complete awareness of the causes of the phenomenon that constantly troubled my essence. That is, of understanding all the reasons why the psyche of those three brain beings who please you has become such an anomaly, I did not return to the planet Mars as soon as on previous occasions but, as I have already told you, existed among your favorites for about 300 of their years. In giving you the information that throws light on the results of the data which were deposited for various reasons in the common presence of the three brain beings of the planet Earth, my essence prompts me and animates my, I, and all the separately spiritualized parts of my common presence to emphasize that during this last sojourn of mine on the surface of your planet I had to study very seriously, and to clarify by experiment, not only the details of the psyche of individuals taken singly but also the perceptions and manifestations of the psyche of these beings in their mass reactions to each other under the influence of various combinations of surrounding conditions. For these experiments of mine I was even obliged to have recourse to those branches of general knowledge which we call Saunaltorico, Gasometronaltorico, and Sapukinaltorico somewhat resembling what is found among your favorites under the names of medicine, physiology, and hypnotism. Soon after the beginning of my sixth sojourn I became categorically convinced, as a result of my experimental investigations, that most of the causes of the strangeness of their psyche lie, not in that usual consciousness in which they have automatized themselves to exist during what they call their waking state, but in the consciousness which, thanks to their abnormal ordinary being existence, was gradually driven back within their common presence and which, although it should have been their real consciousness, remains in them in its primitive state and is called by them the subconscious. This subconscious is, moreover, just that part of their general psyche, which, as you remember, was first observed by the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, who established that in it there are not yet atrophied the data for the fourth sacred impulse, named, Objective Conscience. Having chosen as the chief place of my existence the region in the center of the continent of Asia called Turkestan, I not only went from there to those places where the processes that interested me were running their course but during the lulls in these processes I also traveled a great deal, visiting almost all the continents, where I encountered beings of many nationalities. During these travels of mine I did not stay long anywhere except in certain independent countries on the continent of Asia called China, India, Tibet, and also of course in that half Asiatic, half European community that has recently become the largest of all, named Russia. Single quote.
In the beginning, whatever time I had free from observations and investigations concerning my chief aim I devoted to the study of languages, in order to have greater possibilities of establishing suitable relations everywhere with beings of all types, belonging to every nationality. Maybe, my boy, you do not yet know about that phenomenal absurdity found only on this ill-fated planet, which consists in this for verbal intercourse, again thanks to the abnormal external conditions of their ordinary existence, there are as many different languages, or dialects, having nothing in common with each other as there are distinct independent groups into which they have gradually become divided, whereas on all other planets of our great universe where three brain beings breathe, there is everywhere one common form of what is called sound manifesting mutual intercourse. Yes, this multiplicity of languages is another of the exclusive characteristics of these strange three brain beings who please you. Indeed, on every scrap of terra firma, and even for each tiny independent group accidentally separated from the others on such a scrap, these strange beings have developed a quite different dialect, and still continue to do so. So nowadays, because of this, if one of the inhabitants of some locality of the planet Earth finds himself by chance in another place on the same planet, he has no possibility whatever of communicating with his fellow beings there unless he learns their language. Even I, who by then knew 18 of their languages, to perfection, found myself at times during my travels in situations where I could not even get fodder for my horses, in spite of the fact that my pockets were full of what they call money, for which in general they will joyfully give you anything you wish. It may happen that if one of these luckless beings, Existing in some town or other and knowing all the languages used in that town must for some reason go to a place no farther away than 60 or so of their miles, a distance corresponding approximately to one of our Clintranas. Then, because of the abnormality I refer to, and also of course because the data for instinctive perception were long ago atrophied in these unfortunates, this ill-fated free brain being, so near the place of his established existence, becomes absolutely helpless and can neither ask for what he really needs nor understand a word of what is said to him. Not only do these numerous languages of theirs have nothing in common, but some of them are so constructed that they do not correspond at all with the possibilities of those organs in the common presence of beings called vocal cords, which are specially adapted by nature for this purpose even I, who have a much greater possibility than these beings in this respect, was entirely unable to pronounce certain words. The beings of the planet Earth, however, have themselves realized this absurdity of theirs, and recently while I was still there, a number of representatives of various substantial communities met together somewhere in order to find a way out of this difficulty. The chief purpose of these representatives of the important contemporary communities was to select one of the existing languages and make it a common language for the whole planet. But as usual, nothing came of this really sensible intention of theirs, owing of course to their inevitable dissensions, which always caused their promising beginnings to fall through. In my opinion it will be useful if I tell you in a little more. We 
detail why these dissensions occurred, as this is a very characteristic example of all the dissensions, in general that arise among them. At the outset, these representatives of the substantial communities, why I don't know, limited their choice of a common planetary language to one of the following three. Ancient Greek, Latin, and the language recently invented by contemporary beings called Esperanto. Single quote. The first of the three languages was the language that was elaborated and served for the verbal intercourse of the beings of that ancient community which arose, as I have already told you, from a small group of Asiatic fishermen that later became a substantial community whose beings were, for a long time, specialists in the invention of sciences. From the beings of this community, that is, the ancient Greeks, not only many different sciences, but also their language reached contemporary beings. The second language they proposed for common planetary use, namely Latin, was the language spoken by the beings of that other substantial ancient community which was formed, as I have also told you, from a small group of Asiatic shepherds, whose descendants had been the cause of the gradual formation in the presence of all the beings of subsequent generations of that perverted function which ultimately became fixed and inherent in your contemporary favorites, thanks to which all impulses arising in them, in the sense of striving for evolution, are automatically paralyzed at their very root, the function they call, sexuality. Single quote. Well then, when these representatives of various powerful contemporary communities met together in order to choose one of the three languages, they could not settle upon any one of them owing to the following considerations, Latin they found four in its number of words. And indeed, my boy, the shepherds with their limited needs could not create a very rich vocabulary, and although Latin later became the language of a large community, apart from the special words required for orgies, they did not introduce into it anything worthwhile for the contemporary beings of your planet. As for Greece, Though by virtue of the wealth of its vocabulary it could very well have served as the universal language for their whole planet, since these former fishermen, in inventing every possible kind of fantastic science, also devised many corresponding words that remained in that language, these representatives of the powerful communities could not fix their choice upon it because of a characteristic also ensuing from this strange psyche of theirs. The point is that all the beings who were assembled to select a common planetary language were representatives of communities which, at that period of contemporary civilization, had become powerful, or, as they also say, great. This ancient Greek language is still spoken by the beings of a small community called Greece, but today, although they are descendants of the former Great Greeks, they do not have as many guns and ships at their disposal as those important communities whose representatives had come together to make a unanimous choice of one common language for the whole planet. Therefore, in all probability, those representatives who rejected this language deliberated somewhat as follows. Good heavens! How could the whole world use a language spoken by the beings of such an insignificant community, which hasn't even enough guns to entitle its representatives to equal participation in our international fibroblocks? Of course the contemporary 
beings who become representatives of important communities know nothing of the true reasons why this or that community of beings like themselves dwelling on one or another part of their planet becomes at times temporarily important or great single quote even begin to suspect that this is not because of any particular qualities in the beings of these communities, but depends exclusively on the part of the surface of their planet from which, for the purposes of the most great universal proto-autogocratic process, and in correlation with the harmonious movement of the whole of their solar system, they are required at the given period more of those vibrations arising either from their radiations or from the process of the sacred Rasguarno in them. And as for the third language that the assembled representatives considered for the use of the whole planet, namely, the one they call Esperanto, there did not even arise their usual squabbles, which they characterize as foaming at the mouth, since they themselves, even with their bobtailed reason, immediately recognized that it could in no way serve their purpose. The inventors of this Esperanto must have imagined that a language is like one of their contemporary sciences, which can be picked up at home in one study, and he, it never entered their heads that a practical language can take form only in the course of many centuries and even then only during the process of more or less normal being existence. This new invention called Esperanto might, however, be suitable for the hence of our highly esteemed Mullanasaret and to keep him supplied with amusing anecdotes. In short, this promising undertaking of theirs, to establish one common planetary language, changed nothing in their utter absurdity and everything is still just as it was before, that is to say, this comparatively small planet, with its paltry, half-dead terra firma, remains, as our dear teacher Mola Nasaredin also says, a thousand-tongue hydra. Single quote. Well, my boy, at the very beginning of my last stay among them, when I began my investigations in regard to the fundamental aim I had set myself this time, that is, to become aware beyond all doubt of the causes that had engendered such a peculiar psyche in the presence of the free brain beings of that planet, and when I had to make clear certain hidden details of this psyche of theirs, there unexpectedly arose for me a very serious difficulty it turned out that it was possible to bring to light these hidden properties which are in their subconscious only with their own voluntary help, that is, with the help of that consciousness which, with the flow of time, has become proper to them during their waking state. Furthermore, I realized that this voluntary help would have to come from the three brain beings of all the different types that have begun to be formed there during recent years. But by this time, as it proved, all the data for the arising in their presence of the being impulse called sincerity had already atrophied in them to such a degree that they no longer had the least possibility, even if they wished, of being sincere, not only with other beings but even with themselves, that is, they could no longer, with one of their spiritualized parts, criticize and judge another part of themselves impartially. Here it must be said that my subsequent special research revealed that the atrophy of the data which should be in them for the possibility of being sincere with themselves has one cause, whereas the atrophy of the possibility of being sincere with others has another. The cause of the atrophy of the data 
for being sincere with themselves lies in the disturbance of the coordination of their common psyche. The point is that, at the beginning of this sixth surgeon of mine among your favorites, on the one hand data continue to be crystallized in their common presence for them. Rising in them, as in all three brain beings, of the being impulse called self-remorse, which they call remorse of conscience, while on the other hand all their inner and outer manifestations in the ordinary process of their being existence began to be progressively less and less becoming to three brain beings. Consequently, the causes for the manifestation of this being impulse of remorse of conscience arose more and more frequently in their presence in the sensations thus induced, which are similar to those ensuing from being part dog duty, infallibly led to the suppression and enslavement of the denying principle inherent in the common presence of three brain beings, called self common and then during all the inner and outer manifestations of their common presence, which were set in motion by the natural stimuli of one or another of their independent spiritualized localizations, each time this disagreeable sensation of self-remorse arose, they began, at first deliberately, on the initiative of their ruminating parts, and later by force of habit, to stifle and gradually stop all self-criticism and the resulting impotence increasing more and more in their inner organization has brought on by frequent repetition the whole disharmony of the functioning of their psyche and has gradually caused the almost total disappearance from their common presence of the data necessarily inherent in every free brain being of our great universe for manifesting sincerity even toward themselves. As for the disappearance from their common presence of data for the ableness to be sincere with other beings like themselves, this was caused by that abnormal form of their mutual relationships long before established there which, as I have already told you, was based on their division into different castes or classes. When this habit of assigning one another to these various maleficent castes had become inherent in them, their grad. New ally crystallized in the common presence of each of them two peculiar, quite opposite, organic properties, whose manifestations have ceased little by little to depend on either their ordinary consciousness or their subconscious. These two properties consist in their always behaving toward each other either with haughtiness or with servility. While these properties are being manifested in them, any relationship, on equal terms with anybody at all is paralyzed and thanks to this, their inner sincere, as well as their outer habitual, relationships have become established in such a way, particularly in recent times, that it is now quite usual, if someone belongs to a caste considered higher than that of another, for impulses called, Happiness, contempt, condescension, and so on always and in everything to arise in him for the other and if someone considers his own caste lower than that of another, there will unfailingly arise in him the impulses they call, self-abasement, false humility, obsequiousness, cringing, and many others of the same sort, all of which together constantly corrodes in their presence what is called the awareness of one's own individuality, which ought to be present in them also. And so these properties, becoming inherent in their common presence, gradually cause your favorites to lose the habit of being sincere with others like themselves and finally to cease automatically to be capable of it, even with those belonging to their own caste. 
this reason, my boy, I decided this time, while existing among these favorites of yours, to choose that profession.